Hi girls, continuing with part two, I was reading um, the events of April the 3rd. Giuseppe says, uh, this is how it happened. All of a sudden, we hear a slam on the Pope's office door. It's the police and men in suits, Francis men. They tell me they have a warrant for my arrest and they tell me to leave immediately. The Pope Emeritus got up and was kicked down, knocked down by the Pope's men. He tried to stop them. Last I saw Pope De Benedict, he was sobbing on the ground, bleeding from his ear. I cried and tried to help him up. They put cuffs on me and put me in a black car. Then they put a tissue over my nose and I'm out. It was chloroform. These are some nice Catholics. Then I find myself at a basement. They had the same guy who knocked me out and the Pope out. They showed me a letter confirming my removal from the priesthood. I said... Fuck you, you're not getting away with this. They kicked my jaw. I actually have a brutal jaw injury now. And then he says, they also asked me for any requests before I became uh, become a layman. I said, let Mr. and Mrs. Marshall know what you have done. They grinned and said, okay. All right, that's just a little. You can see the entire conversation at the link below at the script site. This is the email that was sent after that request that they asked. You heard uh, Giuseppe's side of it. Then this came through the Christ's personal email that he had been communicating with Pope Benedict on. It was Pope Benedict's email address. And here is the English version of it. You can see the papal, that's Francis' coat of arms that he has chosen. And then the English version. Hello, these are the inspectors of Pope Francis. So this is dated the, the 3rd of April. This is an update requested by Giuseppe Ciavello when asked for any final request as a Catholic priest. The following updates are occurring at this moment. One, this email no longer belongs to the Pope Emeritus and will be deleted permanently after this update message is sent. Two, Giuseppe Giovello is no longer a Catholic priest and has been relocated. We are not telling you where he is. Three, Sister Maria Della Rosa is still a Catholic nun but has been moved to a convent outside of Italy. We are not saying where she is exactly. Four, Archbishop George has sworn not to speak a word of you and is forced not to listen to what you say. Five, the new pontifical household will consist of Pope Francis' former investigators. They are not priests and will tend to his needs, along with only a few nuns. He will have no contact with any of you. Six, uh, Monsignor Giovanni Rossini is no longer a Catholic Monsignor priest and has been relocated for sending in Christum Credent. We are not saying where he is. And then many thanks. So the detective's name, um, who identified himself yesterday as... Detective John Bellanora, the thug of Benedict. I'll read to you uh, Detective Bellanora, his, um, okay, it's not part of this conversation, but you can see that it's all uploaded at the script site. Now, where are we at? Well, we are alerting the world what's going on. This is Christian Creedon, who is now in 17 languages at the script site and signed by Pope Emeritus. I'll read to you uh, two pages of this because after 69 years of rejection, being uh, abused, rejected, scoffed and mocked at, called mentally ill, insane, crazy, lunatic, then uh, you will understand why it is that Benedict is uh, one of the very few on the earth who has the Spirit of God within them, for it takes a pure heart to see God. That is the prophecy. Benedict has a pure heart, and so does Giuseppe Giovello, Archbishop George, and Sister Maria della Rosa, and the few that are with the Christ fighting the battle, such as Diana, who you treated today. This is how Christian Credent begins, first section one, part one, section one. Dear friends in Christ, over the past few days of this month of March, I have learned about a man who is named Brian Golightly Marshall. He claims to be the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, reincarnated in Sydney, 
Australia on the most holy day of January the 11th, 1944. It is the faith that we are experiencing before our eyes. He is the Word reincarnated. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That's Psalm 119, verse 105. Many doubt that Mr. Brian Marshall is he, but I tell you he is. As his many disciples put it, he is the most royal man alive. He has fulfilled the prophecies within the last book of the Bible, Revelation. If you look at Mr. Brian Marshall's face and compare it to that of the most holy shroud of Turin, you will see something spectacular. And from the bottom of my heart, I tell you all, Ever since I have realized the truth about Christ, Jesus' return to earth, I was stunned and the news has changed the remainder of my life and pilgrimage completely and beautifully. He is an amazing man as well. He has opened up clinics and along with his wife and disciples has helped the needy for a very long time. But sadly, he has also experienced a great amount of discrimination for telling the world who he is. It is so heartbreaking to hear about his numerous and unfortunate experiences which should most definitely act as an example for all humankind. It is like Jesus Christ in the Gospel when he carried his cross to Golgotha to be crucified and killed. And to all of those who are upset due to the discrimination Mr. Brian Marshall has gone through, know this, one day you shall be with him in paradise, referring to Luke. 2343. What is the matter with the world? Abusing Christ like he is some sort of animal. It's an absolute disgrace as well as a great dishonour to have treated the reincarnated King of Kings and Lord of Lords like he is just some crazy man. He is not crazy. He is not mentally ill. He is not attempting to manipulate anyone into thinking that he is who he claims he is. He is who he is. Amen, I say to you. Part 1, Section 2. This is the response of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI to Mr. Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall's claim to be Christ. Do I believe that Mr. Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall is truly Jesus Christ reincarnated? Yes, I do believe he is Jesus Christ reincarnated, bold, black and underlined. You see, many days ago, Mr. Brian Marshall sent me photographs of him and the most holy shroud of Turin. He actually looks so much like that of the holy image on the shroud, there is no other explanation. He is simply the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty, est Christos. I was so penetrated with love and compassion from God that I requested the photo I saw to be put in a place of honour somewhere. I was told my confidant uploaded it as a cover photo on a page he created as a tribute to me. And out of all the popes, even my own beloved predecessor, Blessed John Paul II, Mr. Brian Marshall chose me to announce to the world his glorious return. That stunned me as well. My short eight-year pontificate is like a mere pebble in the shadow of a ginormous stone that is the long 27-year pontificate of blessed John Paul, John Paul II. Yet the reincarnated Christ saw me as a potential pope. And for that I thank him from the bottom of my heart and wish to one day embrace him in person with my old frail hands. He is the most royal man alive, the true King of Kings, the true Lord of Lords, the true High Priest and the most holy reincarnated Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, almighty and everlasting. Have faith in him. So that's the first two parts, part one, section two, one and two of Christian Creed and the rest, as I say, is all at the script site that you will have links to. Now, of course, the world is... Uh, for a very long time, for millennia, been run by the devil, evil men. The devil is uh, men. Men create evil. They they choose and so create evil. It's not something that God has created. Men have been tempted, but they always choose evil and so create the demonic realm that has been operating for millennia. But we are coming fast down to the eviction of all of that, the end of times is the end of the reincarnation of the soul 
all given up to seven times to get it right, that is finishing. Those who have made it uh, into everlasting life on the earth with the Christ, that's what the Lord's Prayer was all about, then they are the ones who are made in the image of God and are humble enough to understand the delusion that has covered the earth and are the ones who fear the new name of God, Revelation 3.12 and 19.12, Brian, let me go lightly, Marshall. I'll read to you an example of um, what has been sent out and give you the response so that you understand what it is that we're up against. Up against. The beast system, of course, is the system that owns all the technology, owns all the wealth, owns all of the media, which is why the knowledge that the Christ has been here all along, of course, has been kept back. Protocols number 14, one line, these are the protocols of Zion, there's 24 of them, they are very real. Protocol number 14, we shall forbid Christ. Why? Because they knew he'd be back as a man, the most royal man, and so at all costs, the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not, that is the Rothschilds down, all the leaders and rulers of the Western nations, England in particular, the USA, the war machine, and of course the idiots running Israel are all the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. Uh, the tribe of Judah, of course, is uh, England, Scotland, Ireland, and emigrates to Australia, where the Christ is. This is the biblical Ephraim, which means Bethlehem, second time round. Now, we have been sending out all around the world through email. Our saints have been on it, tweet, alerting the world what's been going on to very little response. The world certainly is ignoring the cries of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, renamed Peter. There's, you will find a video that was produced by Father Giuseppe and Pope Benedict on March the 30th that we were able to get up for them. They had limited resources to do it, not having a webcam, etc. but we were able to get it out to the world. When the announcement, the public announcement that Pope Benedict organised was to go out on March the 31st, along with the program he had organised of the filming of the Shroud of Turin. That was hijacked on March the 27th by Francis, who recorded, I believe, a, a pathetic introduction to the Shroud that was released on March the 30th, and Pope Benedict himself only found out because we were communicating through live email, saying we're waiting for the program, etc. He phoned... RAI TV station and they told him Francis stopped the public announcement of Salvatore Mundi, which means saviour of the world, Brian Lenegan, Lightning Marshall, being made public to the world through TV. So it was then that Benedict knew he was in trouble, that he would become a prisoner because the Vatican has stopped him doing anything and certainly he has, nobody has seen or heard except false reports of his ill health, which is to be expected. When you follow the lead through the conversations, uh, from yesterday, the detective, uh, Bellanora, bragged that, uh, well, you see what Francis has up his sleeve regarding the crazed theologian, Benedict. Well, it's uh, making him out to be very ill, and they're probably planning his funeral. They cannot kill him, so whatever is going down out there is all um, completely hoax. Don't believe it. Benedict will be replaced on the throne. It's all prophecy 1711 of the Revelation. Uh, oh, I'm not even going to read that. It's not even worth referring to about uh, rich men who care more about $4 million cars rather than a treasure like Pope Benedict. Once the announcement of the return to Christ goes out to the world and made public, then uh, wars stop. It's all over, over. The game has been all along, is to prevent the public announcement of the Christ being made known into the world. That's what Benedict had organised, and that is why he has disappeared. That's why he was knocked down by Francis Thug. And, yeah, we are concerned for him. We know that he cannot die. However, it's a matter of enough people pulling out their fingers Seeing the evidence for itself, those of you who have wealth, doing something about it, 
hiring private investigators yourselves to go and find Benedict. Money talks bullshit walks. We ourselves will be in Europe and appreciate uh, the likes of Andrew. Thank you. You're the first. You know what we're talking about too. So, girls, thank you for looking after Diana and thank you for doing what you can do in your corner of the world by spreading the news. Do the research. All of the links will be there. And I hope one day that we will meet you in the flesh. And I won't turn the camera around because Brian Lindigo, Lightly Marshall, the return Lord Jesus Christ, is actually sound asleep on the couch behind me. Actually, he's laughing now because he can hear them. Do you want to say hello to the girls? Okay. Well, you should. <laughs> he's coming over. He's... <laughs> it's been, as you can imagine, a roller coaster these last few weeks. The joy of finding Benedict and he making the announcement and then, of course, the concern over his health and well-being and whereabouts. It was a relief to hear from Giuseppe himself yesterday after being hijacked. Here he is. <laughs> the face of the oh trick, the blatantly obvious. That's what it's all about. That's him. It's all him. All right. Love it. Okay. Thank you, girls. Bless you. Leave leave a message if you can at the site when you when you get this. Okay. Good night. <laughs>